Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial and in this video we're going to learn how to create this orange peel um, effect with the shader nodes. 100% shader nodes, no textures. Um, I guess I guess the procedural uh, procedurally generated textures that are within Blender but other than that like no images and stuff like that so it should be uh, really cool and one advantage to doing it this way is it's scalable so you can put this on you can put the shader on practically any object and you can give it an orange peel look to it so it's kinda neat so let's uh, go ahead and get started open up a brand new blender and let's get rid of the cube and just put it in a sphere just because that's what oranges look like and just right click shade smooth okay now if you click down here in the area there's like a little blink area just click and drag up and you might get this just click to this drag to the side you don't want that you want to split it and uh, in Blender 2.8 that is one of my complaints is that used to be easier to do uh, but it's still not tremendously hard just uh, it's there and you might even can uh, right in the very corner instead of being in there that's probably where it's actually uh, anyway, yeah, so let's open up our shader editor in here. And because this isn't our default object anymore, we don't have a default shader. So just hit new. And you can name this the orange shader, whatever you want to do. Uh, but hopefully, this is actually pretty easy as we do this. So uh, let's start by giving it the base color that we want. So let's start by shift and uh, so shift A is to add and just search uh, I like to search just because it's more natural I already have hands at the keyboard so I just do noise uh, and I want to want uh, three of these just for future things so I just duplicate them by hitting shift D okay uh, we'll, and we'll use these ones later but we'll, we'll need at least three so you just do that and then let's connect the factor to the base color just so you can see what's going on pretty easily oh and then because uh, we're in Eevee if you have Blender 2.8 uh, you should have Blender 2.8 at this point uh, this candidate is out and uh, uh, that's pretty much what I'll be teaching from this point forward no 2.79 as that's pretty much that's outdated at this point and make sure you're in the render EV uh, the render engine EV and then, yeah you should be good to go uh, click up here on rendered and you can see what this noise texture looks like and you can see if we drag this up and down this is our scale uh, let's drag this up it doesn't have to be perfect because obviously no orange is exactly the same but somewhere between 15 and 16 I think is uh, yeah I think 16.2 looks fine essentially what this is going to be is um, on an orange this is going to be like the main texture that's going to be on this. There is other textures, obviously, because we have at least three, two other noise textures. But this is the main color texture that you'll see. So let's give it color. So let's do Shift A and do a color ramp. Throw it on there, and uh, let's give it. So essentially, what we're now we're doing is we're going to take and we're going to assign a color to the darkest area and a color to the lightest area so if we click on the black this is going to be the darker areas and let's increase this and maybe make it an orange a little bit brighter maybe something like that and then make this a yellow ish orange so we don't get too much variation um, in there Uh, another thing we might probably want to do uh, is you can probably see it more on your screen than on mine. Uh, I don't know how well this will show up on YouTube, but essentially, if you have a zero detail, it's going to be less smooth. If you have higher detail, your um, variation in this, I guess maybe it'd be easier if I plug the base color in. It's easier to see now. Uh, with less detail, it's well, less detailed. It, it, it's harsher. Uh, but more detailed gives it that look. 
uh, we want actually less we want more detail on this one uh, just because this is going to be a little, little bit more of our textured uh, thing going on here I think I want this to be a little bit more oh yeah yeah a little bit darker orange so that we can see more variation it was too close I think that was the problem before okay so now what we're gonna want to do so that's our main base color honestly that, that's pretty easy so we can get rid of those also a quick tip if you cut if you click on the little arrow right here it turns into a really nice looking thing like that so now I'm gonna move the noise texture up here and I'm gonna duplicate the color ramp um, and then plug in the factor into the factor here and the color into the sub surface Maybe zoom out a little bit Okay, make this yeah there we go <laughs> sorry about that so now do color into the subsurface color and you probably haven't if you're kinda new to blender you probably haven't used a lot of subsurface uh, however in an orange there is a lot of subsurface well not I mean relatively speaking compared to a lot of other objects uh, subsurface is a applicable thing so right here you won't see much going on yet until you turn up this subsurface and uh, oh that was a lot of subsurface I'm just gonna do like 0.25 and just see what happens nothing happens and I guess that's because we just duplicated this color ramp we need to change the colors uh, I'm essentially just going to drag them closer to the center so they're less actually you could probably do this even easier so undo that if you come in here you can actually just take the saturation and drag it down uh, I think this will give us a little bit better effect so essentially we have our color and then we have a desaturated subsurface color on there and as you drag this you can kind of see how that affects it. The more subsurface, the more we see this color. It's almost like a mix, uh, but it depends on how light is bouncing on inside of it. And Eevee does a decent job, but this would even look better in cycles. Uh, you'd see more subsurface. Okay, so now let's move on. Um, we're gonna wanna increase this and you can see that what happens with the light with oranges they just happen to be more reflective all around and not pinpoint like reflection so uh, it's going to be on the higher end let's go through see if there's anything else that we need to change I think we're actually pr looking pretty good with that uh, last thing that we need to do here is we need to add some bump map and uh, you might be looking like this is, looks pretty lame and it does right now but we'll change that quickly. So we're gonna need uh, this noise texture, and we're gonna need. Wait, let's actually just connect it, the factor, to the normal, and just sh you can see what happens. Uh, yeah, it looks like trash. So let's just Shift A, add, and add in a bump, and then plugged in, and you can see that it did the factor to normal. We want that actually to the height, and then it will be exaggerated a lot so now let's just pull this down uh, I'm probably thinking like in the in the halfway mark somewhere and then our distance uh, like 0.1 or 0.2 and you can play with that now it looks pretty good better at least however I think we're still not getting the stuff we want so I'm gonna do shift A and add a texture coordinate uh, right now everything is actually defaulted to this node that, so that's actually default for all of these textures but as we plug into the object into each of these vector you can see the difference as it takes the normals and it adjusts it to more of where the object uh, is in real space so this actually looks a lot better already we're beginning to look a lot like an orange uh, I guess we aren't but that is and then uh, with this noise texture let's crank it up and you can see on the bump it's looking really good and then you can t just put this to your liking um, actually maybe like a little bit lower and then 
I'm going to probably give it a little bit more detail. Yep. Uh, one last thing, and this is just for good detail. This is a Veroni. Veroni? I don't know how you actually pronounce it. I use it. I don't say it very often. And then uh, a mix RGB, because we need to mix these two colors in there. So let's just throw this factor into this color and uh, turn this into an add. Uh, and I'm just going to turn it down to zero so that we don't see it and then you can see as you add it what it looks like. And it gives it this little fractally pattern of randomness to it. However, as we increase this, we're going to see more and more of those. Uh, so yeah, somewhere in there. And I don't want it that intense. So that's what the factor is here. Just put it to like 0.3 or so. And we're looking pretty good. So if you want to see, so that that should be our actual, this is our done, we're done now. But I'm going to also, in the video, so that you can see all the details the easiest way possible. I'm going to zoom in on different sections. Just know that everything's connected. All of the textures, except for the Veroni, in this instance, you can, I guess. And, uh, it probably will help. Yeah, it does a little bit. Um, yeah, I just forgot to connect that. I uh, just know that they're all connected to the texture coordinate. And then I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see what each of these are. So I have a noise texture, noise texture, color ramp, color ramp, these colors. And then underneath here, oh, and those were connected to the base color, the top two, and then these next two are to the subsurface color. And then I have a noise color, a noise texture, Veronoi, texture, add, bump, all connected to the normal. And then just straight into the surface. So that's it. Pretty simple. I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you next time on Blender Know How.